Welcome to Edjo Learning Platform. Today we are discussing about carbohydrate. It is very useful for FSO exam. Today we will learn carbohydrate function, sources, digestion and absorption. We know that more than 60% of our food are carbohydrate. Starch, sucrose, lactose, cellulose are the chief carbohydrate in our food. They say as energy sources are structural elements in living cells. First of all, just you look how this carbohydrate we get from plant as a cereal as rice, wheat, corn, barley, bajra, ragi, millet, etc. Vegetables, root, tubers, seeds contain large amount of carbohydrate. Fruits, these contain simpler form of carbohydrate like monosaccharides and disaccharide. As a sweet as the ordinary table sugar, ground sugar, honey, etc. Just you have to look, understand these all items. From this, we can have some questions. So, just you read and study this topics how this carbohydrate we can get from vegetable fruit sweet cereals from which plant items we get it from carbohydrate so next one is that how it get from animals whether the milk contain carbohydrate or just you have to look that animal sources there are no important animal source of carbohydrate except milk and supplies lactose the main principal component of carbohydrate in milk is lactose we all know that we have to study that it's very important and digestion and absorption of carbohydrate means what that's an important thing Breaking down of large food molecule into its simpler unit. Transporting of simpler unit from the gastrointestinal tract to the blood. This is digestion and what is mean by absorption. These are some dietary carbohydrate mono, under monosaccharides, glucose, fructose, galactose, disaccharides, lactose, maltose, sucrose, polysaccharides, starch, glycogen, cellulose, etc. How these all items enter into our body and what happen in this body that we have to study so that we come across an example. Suppose a human eating a sandwich. Bread containing starch. Starch is made up of two forms of glucose, polymerase. These are amylose and amylo. Amylose is a linear chain of glucose link together by alpha 1 4 glycosidic bonds. So, just you look at the picture here amylopectin and amylose are present. Amylose present alpha 1 4 glycosidic bond, and in the case of amylopectin, it's a linear branches as well as branch branches are present so we call it as so two types of bones are present in amylopectin so let's see what happened when starch is injected it breaks down both physically and chemically physically by jaws and tongues chemically by the salivary glands which secrete saliva but also enzymes in it's called alpha amylase is present. What alpha amylase essentially does it breaks down hyd or hydrolysis 1 for glycosidic bonds. Hydrolysis in a perspective means breaking down. Amylase will only break down starch partially. From the mouth, starch travels to stomach. Stomach is partially digested into oligosaccharides. Oligosaccharides means shorter polysaccharides. Here, in the stomach, 
once the starch, starch comes in the esophagus and into the stomach amylase become inactivated this is because because of the presence of acid there is some acidic environment is present means because of the acidic environment salivary amylase using salivary amylase starch digestion does not occur in the stomach stomach will mix the content and allow the, to reach in the small intestine within the small intestine most of the digestion take place let's see what happened in the small intestine lumen lumen of the small intestine within the lumen of the small intestine we can see some cells are present it's known as enterocytes and which is also known as absorptive cells here enterocytes contain brush border enzymes when starch contain the small intestine another organ known as pancreas is situated here secrete alpha amylase pancreas also contain alpha amylase which will help to break down 1,4 glycosidic bond and breaking down the starch further enterocytes also contain brush border enzymes which participate in the digestion of starch these enzymes include maltase which were hydrolysis maltose hydrolysis maltose what do you mean by maltose maltose is an essentially two molecule of glucose molecule you have another enzymes called sucrose and isomaltose so present outside of the enterocytes this will hydrolyze both 1,4 and 1,6 glycosidic bond so we will end up with lot of glucose molecule within the lumen of the small intestine we have na plus is present na plus ions are present within the small intestine we can see at the next slide some of the na plus are present so it will directly enter into the endocytes through sodium glucose lincotransporter and which will allow two molecule of na plus and one glucose into the endocytes of the cell this glucose will enter into the glucose 2 and which present in the base of endocytes once glucose in the cell it can reabsorb and the glucose 2 transfer found in the blood it will increase the glucose level in the blood glucose will be used as energy and as stored as glycogen however not all portion digested the portion of the starch is present in the small intestine which is known as resistant starch some of the portion of the starch does not digested known as resistant starch of the starch that indigested starch is known as resistant starch that enter into the colon colon is known as large intestine and from here the colon is also known as large intestine it resists starch after escaping from the small intestine will undergo fermentation by the help of bacteria and bacteria will produce some short chain fatty acid which is subsequently used by the human body and of course starch where not fermented or digested will be waste and it will be excreted by the human body this all purpose are take place in the body so when we take a carbohydrate protein what happens in the mouth digestion of carbohydrate starts in the mouth and upon contact with the saliva during the mastification saliva contain carbohydrate splitting enzymes called salivary amylase which is also known as pitilin the another action take place 
by the salivary amylase are requires chlorine ions for activation with the optimum pH of 6.7. This enzyme hydrolysis alpha 14 glycol. Enzyme hydrolysis alpha 14 hygloside linkage deep inside polysaccharide molecule. So we have to learn in stomach what how things are happen. After the carbohydrate food is chewed into small pieces chewed into small pieces and these pieces mixed with the salivary amylase and other salivary juice it is swallowed and passed through the esophagus the mixture enters the stomach and where it is known as chyme the action of salivary amylase is limited to the area of mouth and esophagus salivary amylase is inactivated in the stomach is denatured by low pH due to the presence of HCl. Digestion in duodenum or in small intestine. Pancreatic juice contain carbohydrate splitting enzyme pancreatic amylase similar to salivary amylase. These are the two important types of enzyme. The one is salivary amylase, another one is pancreatic amylase. And it's a very important topic what are disaccharide disaccharide different disaccharide are maltase sucrase isomaltase sucrase isomaltase lattice with this present in the upper side of uh, brush border so upper side of small industry and absorption of carbohydrate upper industrial mucus absorb bulk of dietary sugars and insulin is not required for the uptake of glucose that means we already have seen the picture that the resistant starch will go to the large intestine and hereafter they will digest it and do here the digestive carbohydrate is directly into the blood and it will increase the glucose level. These are the all points we included in the digestion of carbohydrate. We all discuss these points. Just you read out these points and understand which type of enzyme is capable for digesting carbohydrate. First one is amylase, alpha amylase present in salivary glands as well as pancreatic. These all are main points. Just you note know, down these points and understand what is happening in our body while we eat a carbohydrate content food. And carbohydrate metabolism in liver. Absorption start from intestine and the monosaccharide are carried by the portal vein to the liver. It is synthesized glycogen from glucose and stores it and reconverts it into glucose. Synthesis of glucose is known as glucogenosis and glucose into fatty acid is known as lipogenosis. There are two types of metabolism present. Anabolism and catabolism is divided into two. Anabolism and catabolism. And what all functions did carbohydrate done when we consume carbohydrate the body term into when we consume carbohydrate body turns them into glucose and provide energy for everyday tasks if the body consume provide too much glucose it will stored in liver and muscle cells as glycogen next important function is that at anti ketogenic effect Presence of carbohydrate is necessary for normal fat metabolism. Here we end this topic. Thank you. If you like this video, like, share and subscribe.